Hey y'all, I'm gonna be real honest. When I first started looking into solar and trying to run power with it, folks kept tossing around terms like 12 volt systems, 100 watt panels, or this inverter pulls 30 amps. And I remember thinking to myself, that sounds important, but I have no idea what they're talking about. If you've ever felt confused, overwhelmed, or just plain lost when it comes to electricity basics, you're not alone and you're in the right place, because today we're gonna break it all down. Volts, amps, watts, watt hours, amp hours, what they are, how they work together, and why they matter. I'll be using my own solar setup right here on my cargo trailer camper to help bring it all home. Let's get into it. I'm Kevin, and this is Ask Paw Paw, where we keep it simple, practical, and real, especially when it comes to tiny homes, solar power, and finding ways to live a little more self-reliant without going broke or going crazy. Now this isn't just theory for me. I've got several solar projects lined up uh, for this summer. Some for our own shed home set up and others for my daughter's tiny home build that we're about to kick off. And I thought, you know what? Instead of trying to figure all this out on my own and then maybe showing folks later, I'm gonna bring y'all along as I learn and build because I know a lot of folks out there are trying to do the same thing that we're doing. Get off the grid a little, save money a little and build something that works for your family. So this is episode one of a whole new beginner series called Electricity and Solar Basics. My goal is to teach this the way I wish someone had taught me. Slow, visual, hands-on, no pressure, no jargon, just good old common sense. So let's break this down visually for all my fellow folks who learn better when they can see what we're talking about. So here's my circuit today. This good old garden hose Picture the hose itself like your electrical wiring. It's the path the electricity, or in this case, the water, <laughs> flows through. Now I'm gonna turn on the water real low, turn the faucet on slightly, and see that little trickle? That's low flow. In electrical terms, that's low amperage just a small amount of current flowing. Now, watch what happens when I put my thumb over the end of the hose. That extra pressure, that's like bumping up your voltage. You're forcing the same water through a smaller opening and it blasts out with more force. So, volts equals pressure. Amps equals flow. But here's where it all comes together. If I point this hose at this bucket and start filling up that bucket with the amount of the water pressure and the flow, the stronger the pressure and the more water flowing out, the more power it has to fill that bucket and the quicker it's gonna fill that bucket. That's exactly how electricity works. Volts times amps equals watts or Another way to look at it, pressure times flow equals power. So if you've got a 12 volt system and something pulls five amps, you're using 60 watts of power. Just like a hose with medium pressure and a steady flow, it's gonna fill that bucket up at a certain amount of time. I got a hole in my bucket, y'all. Look at that. Well, that's never gonna fill up. So whether you're charging a phone or running a fridge, it all comes back to this relationship between volts, amps, and watts. Now let's shift from power to energy over time. That's where watt hours and amp hours come in. A watt hour is how many watts something uses for one hour. If you run a 60 watt bulb for one hour, that's 60 watt hours. Run it for five hours, that's 300 watt hours. An amp hour is how many amps flow for an hour at a given voltage. A 12 volt battery rated at 200 amp hour means 12 volts times 200 amp hours, that'd be 2400 watt hours. So what does that mean for you? That battery could power a 60 watt bulb for 40 hours or a fridge drawing 100 watts for 24 hours. Real life is messier than that, but this gives you a solid starting point. Think of watt hours like your gas tank. The bigger the number, the farther you can go. The faster you burn through power, the sooner you run out. Let's put this to use with a real world example. Right here in my cargo trailer camper, I've got a Red Odeo 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium phosphate battery. That's 2,400 watt hours of stored energy. 
I use it to run a 50 watt mini fridge, uh, and I could do it 24 7 hours a day. But that would be 1200 watt hours. LED lights, maybe add another 40 watt hours. Phone chargers, a fan, and sometimes a laptop, let's say around three to 500 watt hours. Altogether, that would be about 1600 to 1800 watt hours per day. To recharge that with solar, I need about 400 watts of solar panels in good sunlight for at least five to six hours. That's enough to top me off each day in the summer. Now, when it comes to winter or cloudy days, that's a whole nother story. So just to be upfront, Red Odeo did send me this battery to test out, but I've been using it for a few months now, and I gotta say, I'm impressed. It has performed better than I expected. The voltage uh, stays steady, and I haven't seen any weird drop-offs, uh, and it just works. I like that it's lithium phosphate. Uh, the chemistry is lithium phosphate because that means that it's safer and it's longer lasting than traditional batteries. Not to mention it's much lighter. It charges fast. The built-in uh, BMS keeps everything protected, and with 200 amp hours of capacity, it's more than I need for a setup like this. Honestly, for folks just getting into solar, this is probably one of the best bang for your buck options out there. And speaking of solar, here's how to plan your system. And so you wanna make a list of what you want to power each day. Find out how many watts each device uses, multiply each one by how many hours a day that you're gonna be using it, and then add it all up. That's your daily watt hour usage. Use that to figure out how much battery storage you need and then how many solar panels that it'll take to replace that energy each day as you use them from your battery storage. There's no need to be perfect. Just get close enough to make a solid plan. You can always go from there. You can always upgrade and add solar panels, add more batteries as you need them. All right, y'all, let's bring it home. Volts times amps equals watts. Watts times hours equals watt hours. And you can use this to size your batteries, your inverters, and your solar panels and always start with your actual usage. If this helped you, tap that like button and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because this is just the beginning. In the next episode, we'll talk about AC versus DC power and what it means, how it affects your setup, and why folks mess up without realizing it. And if you wanna dig deeper, ask questions, or hang out with other folks that's learning this kind of stuff, Join my free porch community at askpawpaw.com slash porch. Oh, and if you're interested in this Red Odeo battery or any of their other fine products, you'll find my affiliate link and a discount code down in the description below. It helps support the channel and it keeps me making videos like this for you. Until next time, I'm Kevin and I'll see y'all on the porch.